Greetings, and welcome to episode 27. In today's episode, we'll be talking about passion. Hmm, the upsides, the downsides. Should be very interesting. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's get started. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, passion. Very few people know what passion is. And people that do know what passion is, very few of them know how to use it. It's, it's like an art form. It can be applied to almost anything. That's why they say, well, he's passionate about his music. Or, she's passionate about cooking. Or, she's passionate about her ideals. Passion could be a very good thing. It can enhance emotionally whatever you're doing. Whether it's sex, cooking, uh, learning a new skill, hanging out with your friends. You could be passionate about your friends. <coughs> Excuse me. And it can make everything wonderful if you know how to use it you can turn almost any situation into a wonderful thing it just it just can be a wonderful thing I'm passionate about learning new things and so when I'm learning something new I'm passionate when I'm reading and when I'm learning it it's like whew. <laughs> uh, I used to be passionate about my art. I haven't drawn in a very long time. I haven't used my artistic abilities to create art in a very long time. But when I was doing it, I was very, very passionate about it. And it, it wasn't very hard to be passionate about it especially if the subject matter, if I like the subject matter, you want it to come out perfect and adding that little touch of passion to it just <sighs> because the thing people don't realize if, is excuse me, the thing people do not realize is this if you are passionate about something it comes through in whatever you're doing and other people can feel that and it enhances the experience for them if they're viewing it like if it's art or you're making a video, or uh, you're playing the music, or even reading to them, or just being in their company, and you're, like I said, you're passionate about these people you're keeping company with. They can feel that, and it enhances what's going on. It makes it a little bit more enjoyable. Now, I, there's people that don't like passion. They just think, wow. Well, that person's intense, they'll say. Well, that person's passionate. <laughs> People only like to attribute passion to the bedroom. And that's false. That's false. It's not the only place you can have passion. It is one of the more fun places to use passion. <laughs> but it's not the only. Those are, that's the upside. The downside is people like being someone that knows and appreciates passion being around people that have no clue what passion is or what it's for or how to use it. People that don't know that it exists love receiving it from others. They don't realize that you can whip it up yourself they also rely on those of us that do know what passion is to be passionate for them so and that's how they get their fix of it and then there's people that know passion but don't know how to use it and they tend to either apply it at the wrong time or they only apply it say in the bedroom 
and that had, to me that's a waste that's like having this vast ocean and you only dip in it to have sex you could be passionate about anything passionate about anything it's not just for sex it can enhance a relationship if two people are in love and you don't have to and see that's the, the, the other part of the downside is people that don't know how to use it will treat it like well it's like gasoline and you dump it on the fire but yeah but you put too much it's like water it just puts the fire out it's just yeah you become overzealous and and just it's it turns into a bad thing but you just sprinkle a little bit on something that's already enjoyable oh it's like putting the proper seasoning on food passion isn't something that ever wears off because it's not lust it's something you draw up within yourself mm, excuse me it's uh what's what's the word I'm looking for it's amazing <laughs> not the word I was looking for but it is amazing it's uh how do I describe it I can't describe it it's just it's something that needs to be experienced if you've never experienced passion either through yourself or from someone else and I don't mean just sex I mean uh, you ever go to a live show and they're just hitting it just on it and you just watch them look how they're throwing them their whole body into it and you can feel how passionate they are about their music that tells me oh that's a good band it, it, I've seen bands play live that they're just going through the motions and the music sounds good but it is not the same thing as putting that passion in there same with art you can tell when a person if they have a passion for their art it comes through and you're looking at this picture and you almost want to fall in love with it it's just like it's breathtaking almost and that goes along with almost anything you could even use passion as a meditation just that that heightened emotional state without it's not lust it's not that intensity that I spoke of in a, in a past video it is its passion it's like it's like a, an ocean and you only need a couple of drops per situation any more than that and it's wasteful it's wasteful it's wasteful it's like If you use passion, it's like using a a, a, a particular season in your in your cabinet. You can put on so much, and it makes the meal taste awesome. Use any more than that, and it won't taste any better. But there is a point where you use too much, and it makes the meal taste horrible. Fact. <laughs> Fact. So yeah people that know how to use it it's, it's not something you can teach it's something that it's something that you pick up on and see when I use it I like to use it when I'm reading about something new I want to learn like I said I have a passion for learning and it makes it enhances and helps you to remember what it is you're reading or learning about it could be you could be watching a speaker speak and some speakers speak so passionately it's infectious and it just enhances what's going on it makes you want to hear what they're saying it makes you want to believe what they're saying and see that's another part of the downside if someone could be completely full of shit and be a public speaker and as long as they're speaking passionately it'll sink in because wow that feels great to listen to this guy that's what you're thinking in, in subconsciously consciously you're thinking hmm that's a good point <laughs> that maybe if a different speaker were speaking that wasn't so passionate maybe would have been like eh, that sounds like bullshit so th it does have its downsides it can be used negatively we'll say but I mean I'd like to focus on the positive ends of it but I mean there's a very real chance that people will 
abuse it pretty much this is what the only word I can use for it like people that like drama that's when they turn on the passion they don't turn on the passion in the bedroom they don't turn on the passion when they're cooking or reading or watching their shows or whatever or hanging out with people they only turn on the passion when it's time for some drama that's negative use of passion and then because they use the passion then it becomes it feels good to them to have this drama because they're passionate about it and they're wondering well, well how can they don't enjoy my drama well because it feels good to you it doesn't feel good to me <laughs> that's not something I want to participate in I don't want to participate in your drama <laughs> You're so vehemently opposed to being wrong, to uh, being shown that you're wrong, to being the one, to, to being proven wrong. I think I just said that, but you get the idea. People that are passionate about maintaining a level of outward perfection falsely I might add because nobody's perfect and the people that act the most perfect probably have the most skeletons in their closet fact so it's not even probably they do if you get to know them and dig a little deeper yeah they probably got more skeletons in their closet than you'll find on the Civil War battlefield <laughs> Because they passionately want to be viewed as perfect, if you call them out on their bullshit, yes, they will defend themselves passionately. And most often than not, that is the only time they will use their passion. And it's a waste. It is a waste. Because you, all you're doing is making it feel good to be full of shit. <laughs> and rally against someone that calls you out. How does that benefit anyone? Not even you. And then after a while, and this person's had enough, and all you say is, it's your fault. There's got to be someone else. Because that plays into the passion, because now I've got something to complain about, and rally behind, and be passionate. <laughs> Uh, it's the ne negative use of passion. When, if you're using your passion to solely to defend yourself, yeah, that's not what it's for. No, I'm not saying that you cannot be passionate about the defense of self because righteous indignation, <laughs> can't speak today, righteous indignation is a form of passion. It is, you're, you're passionately speaking in defense of yourself or someone else. But the, the very term righteous indignation means that you truly, honestly see yourself as right rather than just being passionate about not being wrong. <laughs> There's a difference between being right and not being wrong. Someone that is not wrong is usually wrong. <laughs> Someone that is right is usually right. I mean, I mean, if the facts speak for themselves, if, if you have to fall back on gender, I'm a woman and women are always right. If you have to fall back on uh, insults, if you have to fall back on like changing the subject, or excusing your actions because, well, I'm from the moon and people on the moon. No, 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 no. If you have to fall back on these things, you're wrong. So being passionate when you speak about these things, all you're doing is making yourself more addictive to, more addicted to being full of shit. And no matter what I say or what anybody says, you're going to stick to your guns because you're being passionate about your own defense, even if you're full of shit. Not wanting to address the issue because if you address the issue directly, it will show that you're wrong. 
and then it nullifies the passion. Uh, and I think maybe that's what it is. They're so addicted to being passionate about their defense of being perfect that when you call them out and actually cause them to see the truth, it takes the wind right out of their passionate sails. And, uh, you ruined my little thing here. And then they get even more upset, and that's why they rely on insults or bring up past things that happened years ago and were probably viewed wrong then, too. And then they bring it up from their point of view that was slightly askewed because they only bring up how they felt in the moment. They don't bring up the whole situation. <laughs> so, negative use of passion is a thing. But like I said, righteous ind indignation, you could be standing up, defending yourself passionately, not because you want to be viewed as right, but because very real damage has been done here and I want it addressed. Whether or not you see it as right, whether or not you see it as wrong, I want this addressed and I want it addressed now. And someone that is passionate about being viewed as perfect, oh, they'll address it. But it'll be as soon as the conversation starts, or maybe they'll spend the whole time sidestepping the whole conversation and not want to have the conversation with you because they know as soon as they open their mouths, you're going to rip that passion out of their sails and their boat's going to stop because <laughs> they know they're wrong. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, it, it is not it's something that's restricted to the spiritual path either. It is anyone can be passionate. But like I said, you can use it as a meditation. I mean, it's a very, I want to say, intense energy to, to uh, hold your meditation on, but it can be done. But bear in mind, if if you carry that frequency when it, wherever you go, you could be viewed as being intense, and that puts off people that either don't know uh, that passion can be used outside the bedroom, or no, that's pretty much it. Most uh, the people that don't understand passion, that don't know it, that don't know that you can draw it up at a moment's notice. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, those people will see you as intense. People that don't know how to use it will see you as intense. People that use it negatively will see you as intense. They don't. Uh, people that use it negatively don't understand people that use it positively. Just like people that use it positively can't fathom why you would want to use it in a negative light. <laughs> To defend yourself, knowing you're wrong, you know you're wrong, but you're def you're not even really defending yourself. You're defending your air of perfection. And if you burst my bubble, then pretty much you're getting an ultimatum at that point. If you burst my bubble, is there? I'm not going to speak to you. <laughs> I'm going to be mad at you. Just because you're right doesn't mean I'm not going to be mad at you. <laughs> yeah. I don't let people fall back on gender. Well, I'm a woman, and you know what? You just every time you say that you set women's lib back a hundred years. Yes, you're a woman, but you're capable of making mature adult decisions. And if you're not, then I'm in the wrong relationship. <laughs> Fact. <laughs> but I mean. You can tell the difference. If you get into an argument with someone, you can tell when you might be wrong. Not because they're passionate, but because the way they speak, their inflection changes when they're using righteous indignation versus just being passionate about not being wrong. <laughs> and you can tell. And I have had cause to backpedal a bit and say, hey, okay, maybe I'm wrong because they seem pretty sure that they're right. You can tell when someone's being full of shit and being passionate about it, and they're right, and they know they're right, and they're passionate about it. <laughs> I've been, I've been, I've called people out 
and they had to retract my statement. Likewise, I've been called out and been found to be wanting, so to speak. <laughs> but you have to understand the experience of passion is per person. It's per person. I don't experience passion the same way you experience passion. And that's not to say I don't apply it to the same things you do. It's just, it's it's a completely different monster to me as than it is to you. Completely. Just because we have two different points of view. <coughs> Excuse me. And because we have two different points of view, Sometimes two people that know how to use it and know when to use it and use it properly will come together and they still won't kind of match. It's not because the passion isn't there. It's not because they're not doing it right. It's because maybe you don't know each other well enough to share a common point of view. Enough to, okay, we can get that to fit. <laughs> Likewise, there's people that meet and that's that they call it love at first sight, that all of their emotions line up perfectly, even their passion and click, boom, that's the relationship. You got to have something in common, they say. It doesn't have to be an outward in common, like, oh, we like the same video games and, and she drives the same car and, and it doesn't have to be that. It could be all internal. Everything just clicks on the inside and everything matches. Why would you turn that away? Because she doesn't like playing video games. <laughs> now, speaking of video games, <laughs> or should I say, speaking of doing things within a relationship, I'd like to get back into my music and my artwork. I, that's, I would love to do that. And uh, because I was passionate about my music not because I was like awesome at it in my opinion but because I was passionate about it and I was writing my own music and you just yeah, you, you can write a song that to you sounds good because you know the story driving it and be passionate about it and because you're passionate about it everybody else loves that song and it's, it's coming through the amp or if it's an acoustic it's coming through the sound hole and just boom everybody loves it <laughs> when you're passionate and know how to apply it properly it can be a wonderful thing just the same as it can be a negative oh that person's intense and some people are intense because they don't realize they're using passion they're just passionate people and they don't they couldn't see it any other way if you snatch the wind out of their sails it's probably alien to them what would why'd you do that <laughs> <laughs> because they're it's on full all non-stop I didn't, can't I'm not sure if I'd be envious of that because not being passionate every second of the day is kinda keeps your nerves at, ba at a balance <laughs> when you uh, are passionate non-stop 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 and see and that that what I was about to say draws the question if you're passionate non-stop non-stop about everything about everyone about just about being a nice person or a good person or even about being a bad person does that do you build a tolerance to that does it diminish the sensation over time I don't know because I only turn it on to me to when I believe it's necessary and it's almost not a turn it on, it's, it just becomes triggered when I do certain things. And like when it's time to hash out details of an argument, that's not the time to turn it on. Because I don't want to become addicted to fighting or to arguing. I don't even want to become addicted to being right, even if I am right. I save it for the more positive aspects of life. Now, don't get me wrong. I've caught myself turning it on in the heat of an argument. But I tend to lean more toward the artistic expression, like cooking, uh, playing guitar, drawing, 
things like that when I'm singing. Oh, when I'm singing, I can be super passionate. That's one of the reasons why I love singing. But I don't think I don't think that it benefits anyone when passion isn't reined in. If you can become passionate at the drop of a hat, that could be a bad thing also. Because you never know what hat's going to hit the ground. Fight! Poof! You know what I mean? You just, you just, you don't know. Or having it on constantly and not ever turning it on, off. Because then everything's drop of a hat. Poof! I'm going to be here! You know? <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, and having a hair trigger is almost as bad. Like, <laughs> like I said, poof, fight, or poof, friends, or whatever. It's like, rein it in. Choose your battles, you know? You know? Maybe you should be a public speaker if you're that passionate. <laughs> or maybe you're passionate about being afraid of public speaking. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but what I do know is if you can learn to draw that up it can be the difference between having an okay time and having an awesome time it can be the difference between having okay or awesome anything but knowing when to not turn it on can be the difference between having a, a, a normal argument and having a drag out blow out fight knock down drag out fight I think is yeah I said that wrong <laughs> it could be the difference between having a simple argument and a knock down drag out fight I for one would rather have a simple argument but if you're speaking to someone that's passionately defending their not being wrong not that they're right and they know they're not right but they're defending their not being wrong so they can maintain that air of perfection you know that I'm perfect and you can't do anything to tell me I'm not perfect and it's not that you're unable to it's that you're not allowed to <laughs> so yeah but that I guess that depends on the, the, the psyche of the person involved in that particular situation a sociopath yeah they're gonna rally against you for trying to tell the truth if telling the truth makes them look bad, they will rally against you. And they will use tricks and techniques to make you look bad instead of making them look bad. Because if you damage their perfection, I mean, if you dent it a little, they'll view that as maybe forgivable. But if you damage it like you actually pierce the armor, oh yeah, you're done, buddy. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I, uh, yeah. I have had several people like that in my life and yeah frankly I don't have people like that in my life anymore because I choose not to have people like that in my life there's people I kept around just because you forget you walk on eggshells long enough you will forget that they're that way until the next time you have to call them out and then once you call them out you remember <laughs> why you were walking on eggshells and not calling them out in the first place but yeah, it's, I, I guess having passion used negatively against me has made me not want to use passion at all in any for any sense. Because, I mean, think about it. If someone uses a thing, it doesn't have matter if it's passion. It could be a firearm. It could be a stick. It could be a rock. If someone uses that thing negatively enough times, you're not going to want anything to do with that thing. Like that's why people want uh, guns to be made illegal, even for law-abiding citizens to to carry a firearm or to even own a firearm, because so many people perpetrate negative acts with these things. That they just, oh, I'm done with it. I'm done with it. Well, passion works the same way. If someone comes at you passionately and they're wrong every time and you know they're wrong and you can tell they know they're wrong and they're using passion to push their argument, yeah, you're not going to want nothing to do with passionate people ever again. And if you'll meet this awesome person 
and they'll be passionate and you'll get oh oh passionate yeah look at the time I got a thing <laughs> <laughs> And that's how that works. <laughs> that's why some people just cannot stand passionate people. That person's intense. What they mean is why that person is passionate, like this one person I used to know that treated me poorly and was very passionate about it. And until you run into someone that uses it as like almost an art form in itself, until you meet that person, you're going to have a negative view about intense people, people that are extremely passionate. So I say be passionate. Give and receive that passion between because it's a positive energy. Be just because you can use it in a negative light doesn't make it any less of a positive energy. Anything can be used in a negative light, even love. Don't be chased off by love either. Oh, they love. I, I can't do that. It, it hurts. No, love doesn't hurt. Idiots hurt. <laughs> Stay away from idiots. Bring all the love in you want. Stay away from idiots. Same with passion. Passion doesn't hurt. Passion is just energy. It's the idiots that hurt. Stay away from idiots. <laughs> 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 I should learn to practice what I preach. Ha ha. <laughs> anyway, life is a very wonderful and awesome place. And if you can have and learn to use passion, it makes it even more wonderful. It is one of the wonders that was put here for us to discover and enjoy. <laughs> or should I say rediscover and enjoy so many people that don't live passionately and they just it's like it's like being the only person in the room that's in color and everybody else and everything else is in black and white and everybody feels ordinary and I've already made a diff I I've already made a video about ordinary and so you know my views on that and if this is your first video there's no such thing as ordinary you may believe there's a such thing as ordinary, and that alone makes you ordinary. Don't be... What's the word I'm looking for? Don't be monochrome. <laughs> be technicolor. Live with passion. But not so much passion it ruins everything. Not so much passion that you'll do everything with passion, even defend yourself when you're wrong. And you know when you're wrong, when you're defending your ego. And that's what it is. When you're defending your want to look perfect to everyone, all you're doing is defending your ego. And that you didn't even say, I'm going to defend my ego. Your ego said, hey, quick, he's talking shit about me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a fact. Anyway, we're getting on past the 30-minute mark. Uh, I really, really did like this video. It was a very good video. But if you have enjoyed the video or learned anything, please click the like button. You can favorite it if you want. But if you would like to keep coming back here and getting more information and keep learning new things, or maybe come and teach me something, you go ahead and click the subscribe button. So, also, Feel free to leave comments down below or video responses. I love to hear from you. But, uh, yeah. Until next time, you hang in there. <laughs>